With the cabinet shakeup now looming after the swearing in of President Uhuru Kenyatta, lobbying for cabinet slots has intensified. Some candidates are approaching influential relatives of both the president and the deputy presi uh, presiding, seeking a consideration, but now Kenya party leader Martha Karua, who had been touted to join cabinet if she lost the Kirinyaga gubernatorial race, has indicated that she is not interested. And as our senior political affairs reporter Chris Iron now reports, the new look cabinet is likely to have more politicians than the current one. With the swearing in of President Uhuru Kenyatta now over, the focus shifts to delivery of the promises in the Jubilee Manifesto for the next five years. And the men and women to carry that mandate in terms of policy are cabinet secretaries. Already reports arrive of a looming major cabinet shakeup as lobbying intensifies. The cabinet is expected to be expanded to the constitutional maximum of 22 so that the president can accommodate various interests. The cabinet positions are political appointments. And as such, the appointing authority, uh, while they were doing campaigns, they had uh, regions they had promised, they had people they had promised that they'll work with them. So most likely we are going to see uh, appointments that are rewarding the efforts of particular individuals or regions. However, despite the president's assurance that whoever fails to clinch the Kirinyaga gubernatorial seat between Anwai Guru and Martha Karua will be accommodated in government during the campaigns, the NAC Kenya leader now says she is not interested in any cabinet slot. I can work with government, but not as an insider with government. And that's a very honest answer that I'm giving. I've been in cabinet. I have no wish to return to cabinet as it is now. Yeah, and I have not been offered. Already the High Court in Kirinyaga has dismissed Karua's petition against the victory of Waigoro. And I'm not looking forward myself to be a member of government at the national level. My focus, and I had said so before, for this particular period is on the county. Though the crafting of the list of new candidates remains a tightly controlled affair, some of those being touted to join cabinet include former Budalangi MP Ababu Namwamba, former Funyula MP Paul Otoma, who lost to Busia Governor Suspita Ojamong and supported the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta, former Karachunyo MP Engineer James Rege, former Meru Governor Peter Munya, former Mombasa Senator Hassan Omar, former Kitui Senator David Musila, as well as former Kajiado Governor David Nkidienye. Hassan Omar in, in, in the coastal region, uh, warming up towards Jubilee in the recent times, having resigned as a Secretary General for um, WIPA. Such people having, you know, gone against the tide and the wave of the political strength of their region, which could be in NASA, and they have now gone to Jubilee, and out of which they have been punished politically, they are likely to be rewarded. So we are expecting a cabinet that is well balanced, with a national outlook, with the professionals whom we can trust. Much as we are talking about healing the nation, we start by healing the nation by having people from across the board, all tribes, to be involved, incorporated. And to occasion a vacancy in cabinet, there are those who are said to be on the chopping board. They include Dan Kazungu of Mining, Rachel Omamo of Defense, Phyllis Kandie, CS East African Community, Jacob Kaimeni, CS Lands, Hassan Wario, CS Sports, Cleofa Mailu of Health, Judy Wahungu, CS Environment, Adam Mohamed of Industrialization, and Willie Bet, CS Agriculture. Those who appear safe are Education CS and Acting Interior, Fred Matiangi, Najib Balal of Tourism, Mwangi Kunjuri of Devolution, Amina Mohamed of Foreign Affairs, Charles Keter of Energy, and Eugene Wamalwa, CS Water. Uhuru's cabinet will also be informed by the 2022 succession politics. There is this uh, aspect of the deputy president who will remain in active politics and knowing by the indications that are there, he is likely to be running for presidency himself. And we will expect that he will have a team he will have worked with that is more political so that he can be able to assist him that time to achieve his political you know, uh, end. So it's going to be a mix of both. Uh, we are not likely to see purely politicians. We are going to see those who are performers. In their final terms, many presidents have focused on their legacy and strive to achieve things not possible in their first term. 
Given that the cabinet slots as per the constitutions are limited to 22, which is the maximum, those who will not be lucky to be appointed in cabinet will tag their luck to be appointed as principal secretaries since it is unlimited as per the constitution or else join to be chairman of different boards. Chris Dairo, KTN News in Nairobi.